Okay, so I've drawn my scale diagram by using graph paper and I'm going to label my focal point and place an object at the 4 meter mark. Now I've made ticks on my graph paper every 4 squares to represent every meter. So this would be 1 meter, 2 meter, 3 meters, 4 meters on the left and similarly on the right. Now the mirror is convex which means that the left hand side of the mirror is the shiny side. This is the mirrored side on the left of the mirror and this is the solid side. So our focal point or will be 3 meters on the right hand side of this particular mirror. We call it a virtual focal point, virtual focal length. So I've labeled F and I put a red dot exactly at the focal point at the 3 meter mark as the question has stated. Next we need to place an object 4 meters from the mirror so it's always going to be on the mirrored side. So the 4 meter mark will be somewhere over here and remember the tradition is to use arrows as our objects and they can be any height as it's all relative to the magnification anyway. So I'm going to make my object a couple of units high. Okay so we see our object and now we can begin with our ray diagram. My first ray is always the same. I always start with a parallel ray that strikes the mirror and ends up somehow going through the focal point. And in this case it's a virtual focal point. Let's see how that looks. Okay, so there's my first parallel ray. It goes along, it strikes the mirror, and it's going to bounce off the mirror so that it diverges up along where my hand is. But it doesn't diverge randomly. It diverges along a line that's in line with our focal point. So how does that look? Let's draw that in now. Okay, so I've drawn in my reflected ray. It diverges and bounces out at this angle, but in line that is all the way along to my focal point. So this is one straight line. It starts off dotted in the inside because that's virtual. That's not where the ray actually is. That's just where it appears to come from. And then continues along this path here. Now the next ray we want to do, we want to start it in line with the focal point. So we can see my ray coming in, down at an angle, right in line with our focal point. So I've taken a ruler and lined it all up. Once it hits the mirror, anything associated with the focal point eventually has to be parallel. So it's going to strike the mirror and bounce off parallel. Let's do that now. Now it's our two reflected rays that must cross to create the image. Clearly they're never going to cross on the left as they're diverging away from each other. But they appear to cross somewhere in behind. So if I dot both these rays back in a nice straight line, the top one's already done, then we can see where they cross. So I'll dot the bottom one back now and I'll use green for that so we know. Okay, so I've dotted that ray back. These two reflected rays appear to cross at precisely this point right here where my hand is. So my image is going to be upright because it's on the same side of the line as my object and it's going to be smaller. Let's draw in our virtual image now. So we see we've located our virtual upright image. Remember virtual images are upright. It's virtual as indicated by the dotted line which is barely visible there because it's so small and it's smaller. The virtual upright smaller image and its location if that's the one meter mark and that's the two our increments are 0.25 so this would be 1.5 halfway in between 1.75 so it's just before 1.75 so looks like it's around between 1.7 and 1.72 so di is negative 1.72 and we say it's negative because it's a virtual image